we're about to change the rear disc pads on a Mazda 3 2005. As always, safety is the utmost importance. Make sure to chalk the front wheels so that your car does not move forward since you will not be using uh, the brakes, the emergency brakes. Use two jack stands to support the weight of the vehicle. I always like leaving the hydraulic jack in position. One, it makes it easier when you're finished working. And two, it's just another added safety precaution. One of the things I do is remove the brake reservoir cap so that when I do compress the caliper piston and the fluid backs out, it has a place to go to. So it'll actually overflow in here. And this towel is designed to, to catch any overflow and keep it from touching the paint because you know it will blister your paint if it comes in contact with that. One of the first steps is, of course, to get the lugs and the wheels off. And then the first thing you're going to do is take off the dust caps. There's one there, and there's also one right here, which I've already taken off. Put that next to my lug nuts. And then we're going to use a 7 millimeter hex Allen wrench to loosen the, the bolt that holds the bracket together. Okay, so now we're going to take off the bolt. We just ratchet that out. Then we're going to go down to the bottom and do the same thing. Oh, I'm going to just use a screwdriver to take them out. This is pretty nice and clean. One of the things I'm going to do with it is put uh, brake fluid cleaner and shine it up. And then we're going to put some synthetic lubricant so that it lets this rail ride back and forth. And we take out the other uh, bolt and then we'll move on to the rest. This is the, uh, the spring on the caliper. It needs to be removed. Be careful because it tends to just want to pop and dance out sometimes. I guess today wasn't one of those times. And that's the orientation. Okay, at this point, we should be able to pull this caliper off there we go and what I do is I don't know if you can see it there's a hanger that I attached and it's going to support the weight of the caliper so that the hydraulic hose is not supporting the weight and now we see the pads and now check this out you see this little shim the dealer wanted to do a complete brake job and wanted like three hundred dollars this guy at a local br uh, shop put this little piece of metal in there and he solved my problem for free so Saved myself $300 for like 10 cents worth of metal. So we take the pads out. See this one has the two buttons on it. Put that down for a second. Let's get the other one out. And this one has the X. So that's the inside pad. And it has all these little springs and stuff that dampen it and keep it from making noise. Okay, we're looking at the... Uh, Looking at the rotor, it's not in too bad a shape. So I just spray some uh, spray cleaner to get all leftover oil and gunk off of it. Make sure it's nice and clean. 
We're looking at the uh, brake caliper and inside is the piston. Now normally on the front brakes you can just use a clamp and just push that piston in and you're done. With the rear brakes on this Mazda 3 it actually has to be pushed in and rotated clockwise because the parking brake, emergency parking brake mechanism is tied into it and it's ratcheted. So you either borrow a tool like this from one of the uh, local auto shops or you can try long nose pliers but I'm gonna go with the tool because you know use the right tool for the right job and oftentimes you'll have success. So um, I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant on the gasket here so that it doesn't get pinched or torqued. Uh, put a little just synthetic lubricant on that and then we'll set up the tool and basically the tool is going to go it, these two pins line up with those two holes this back plate here is going to press up against here and apply force and plus it's going to turn as you turn this handle ah magic we'll be right back in a moment so now we're just going to apply a little dab to where the pads make contact with the brackets and this is again synthetic lubricant and what it really helps with is reducing the chance that you're going to get noise because it's going to allow the pad to just ride a little in there and it'll dampen any vibration and hopefully your brakes will never squeak. Just apply a little bit of this, not a lot, because remember, you don't want to have lubricant spraying all over your rotor. We now have our new pads, and the difference between the inside pad and the outside pad is the outside pad has the two bolts. Remember, I mentioned that as we took off the old ones. And the inside pads have this dampening mechanism which according to the manufacturer doesn't need any lubrication whatsoever. So you just drop these right onto our pre-lubricated rails. All right, our pads are in place. We take the caliper, I release it from my little hanger. I make sure the cables aren't binding and it should slide right over look at that and then we take our bolts and we slide them in okay so I push the bolt in I feel the bolt make contact with the bracket put in my socket wrench and just let it ride in home And I'm going to start the bottom one too so that they're both aligned. Okay, so those caliper uh, slides are in. And see there's a little bit of movement, which is good, so we can ride. Now we're going to put in our spring. And our spring goes into the holes. And it's going to go underneath that, mark, that point and this point. It's going to keep it all together for us. Okay. And then I'll uh, torque it, which is about 21 pounds per square inch. And then you throw your wheel back on and uh, you've done pads. Brakes are installed. Wheels are back on. Two things left to do. One, tighten the cap on the brake reservoir. Mine did not overflow. Why did it not overflow? Simply because I don't add brake fluid as my brakes wear down. I do keep it at the minimum requirement for brake fluid but I do not take it up to the maximum therefore when I put in the new pads and the pistons were compressed and it displaced the brake fluid uh, there was still plenty of space in the reservoir for it the last thing to do is to turn on the carb 
pump the brake pedal until it's not feeling mushy anymore. That means you have uh, hydraulic fluid in your system up to pressure. And then again, probably would be wise to check your reservoir to make sure that it's not at minimum and closer to max. And that's it for doing the rear brake pads on a Mazda 3 2005 model.